Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecturelet introducing sets. Now, sets are a crucial concept for understanding formal semantics because we'll be using them a lot for understanding the denotations of things. Now, sets uh, are a straightforward mathematical concept and they're essentially a collection of objects. And it doesn't matter what the objects are. It can be letters, numbers, imaginary objects, real things, it doesn't matter. You put them together, it's a set. Now, a set is typically written in a very particular way so that you know, in a formal sense everyone knows it's a set. We use curly brackets and then inside it we put whatever we want and we separate each one with a comma. Now this is a set. This is the set containing A, B, C. Each of the objects that are listed here is a member or an element of the set. And if we want to talk about these objects being elements of this set or members of this set, then there's a symbol for that too. And it looks like this weird sort of E. It's actually a Greek epsilon. And there's a, a, an etymological reason for that that doesn't concern us. But A is essentially in the set A, B, C. Now, this is a set that's demarcated by listing all of its members. For a set that just has three members, that's not a problem. But when a set has a lot of members, then that becomes a bit of an issue. And so instead of just listing all the members, we can just write out its name. Well, first we have to give it a name. But well, we can give it whatever name we want. We can call this set A. Uh, we can call it whatever we want. Let's call it A. And notice that I've given it the capital letter A. This is a notational convention as well. Typically, single individual objects, which are called atoms or atomic objects, are given lowercase letters. And sets are given uppercase letters. Now this is the case even if we use Greek letters, which is sometimes the case. Now a set, then, we give it a name. We could have given it any name we want. We could call it Mickey Mouse. We could call it the, the symbol that Prince used for his name for a while. It doesn't matter. It's a name. And once we say that, well then now, instead of writing out that A is in the set A, B, C, we can just say that A is in set A. Object A is in set A. Right, and these are not equivalent. A, little a is not the same as A. It happens to just be a member of A. So a set has members. A set can have any number of members. It can have an infinite number of members. So for instance, the set of natural numbers is infinite because there's an infinite number of numbers. A, but a set can have zero members, too. In that case, we call it the empty set. And the empty set is, the empty set is described or expressed with this symbol, which you recognize uh, as the null symbol in linguistics, and it comes from the use as the empty set symbol. Sometimes the empty set is written as the set brackets with nothing in them. That is an empty set. So a set with no members is an empty set. A set with one member is what's known as a singleton set. And sometimes this becomes important and it's a useful term to have. So a singleton set would be something like this, the set containing A. And one thing to always keep clear, though, is that the set containing A is not the same thing as A. So I'll put that up here. The set containing an object is not the same thing as its object. There's a slightly similar feel to that, to uh, what we talked about 
in an earlier lecture right, about how the linguistic expression is not the same thing as the object. This is another kind of identity. They're tightly linked. And here again, these are tightly linked. The set containing A and A are tightly linked, but they're not the same object. And that will be an important distinction to keep clear. So that's the basics of sets. And once you get that idea, uh, then it's really just a matter of seeing what is in the set. 